Hello friends, welcome to Theory of Computation lecture series. In the previous video, we have seen generating the grammar for a given language using the grammar of a language which we are already known. In this video also, we will see another example of context-free grammar and in that we will try to generate the context-free grammar using the same approach of a known context free grammar for a language. First, let us see the problem definition. Write a context free grammar for the language L is equal to A raised to N, B raised to M such that N is greater than M which is greater than or equal to 0. So the minimum value of M is 0 but the minimum value of N is m plus 1. So whatever my m value is, if my value of m is 10, then my n can have a value greater than or equal to 11. So what we have to do is we have to split this condition into two parts and observe if we can find some pattern and use an existing grammar to generate the grammar for the given language. In the language asked, there are two relations to be maintained. This relation are independent of each other. This relations like n is greater than m and m is greater than or equal to 0 are independent of each other. So I can divide this condition into two parts and work on them separately. This relations are n is greater than m and n and m both are greater than or equal to 0. So this applies to both n and m but since first condition is also applied that is n is greater than m so my n should be greater than 0. Here n is greater than m can be replaced by n equal to m plus some value k which is greater than 0. Just as I have said in the beginning that if my m value is 10 then my value of n is equal to greater than or equal uh, greater than or equal to 11. So my k value is greater than 0. So it is at least 1. So if my value of m is 10 then it should be at least 1. So my minimum value of n is 11. But then it is greater than 0 so it can be 11, 12, 13 depending on the value of k. Now why are we doing this? Let us see that in the next step. So we can write this language L which is equal to A raised to M plus k. So I am substituting this N equal to M plus k. So my N is now M plus k. So it is becoming A raised to M plus k, B raised to M such that my m is greater than or equal to 0 and k is greater than 0. So here my these two conditions which are dependent on each other n is greater than m and n and m are greater than or equal to 0. So here there are two conditions are now getting independent. So my m is greater than or equal to 0 and my k is greater than 0. So I can rewrite this language as a raised to m, a raised to k, b raised to m. So what we can do is, so if there is this a raised to 2 plus 3, then I can write it as a raised to 2 followed by a raised to 3. That means 2 plus 3 is 5, so it is 5 occurrences of a, that is nothing but it is same as 2 occurrences of a followed by 3 occurrences. So 2 occurrences are 3 occurrences will give me 5 occurrences in all. Hence, this a raised to m plus k can be written as a raised to m, a raised to k. And this b raised to m is as it is. Now, we know the context free grammar for the language L1 which is equal to a raised to m, b raised to n where m is greater than or equal to 0. We can use the context-free grammar and update it as per the required language. 
so here this language is known where the occurrences of a and occurrences of b are same and the context free grammar for that language is already known which is s tends to asb or epsilon now if you go back to the previous video we have seen that it is s tends to asb or ab or epsilon now i have removed that production s tends to ab because S tends to AB can be generated by using this production S tends to ASB and epsilon. So if I substitute this epsilon here, what I will get is AB. So what I am doing is I am making an unambiguous grammar from a given ambiguous grammar. So this is an unambiguous grammar for the language A raised to M, B raised to M. That means the A and B have same number of occurrences. The grammar for generation of a raised to k, which is k greater than 0, is. So, what I am doing is, I, have, I know this a raised to m and b raised to m. And this a raised to k, I will try to generate the grammar and put it into the grammar of a raised to m, b raised to m. Let us see how we can do that. So, a raised to k, k is greater than 0, we can write it as a tends to a a or a. So, this is nothing but it is a right linear grammar for generating a raised to k. We can see that for the count of a's and b's, the production a s b is used. And s tends to epsilon to complete the word generation. So, for a raised to m, b raised to m, the number of a's and b's are same so we are using this a s b for the number of times we have the count of a and b and when we want to stop the word generation we say that now the word is generated we use this production s tends to epsilon now for this given language l which is a raised to n b raised to m what we have to do is the termination condition in L1 should be the point where the additional A's are added to the word. My epsilon is being substituted in the middle of A and B to stop the word generation. Now at this position, what I can do is I can focus on the additional A's which were added to the word. So this additional A, A raised to K. So my focus is this s tends to epsilon here. So s tends to epsilon should be replaced with s tends to a because my a generates a raised to k that we have seen here. Now this production a tends to a a or a it generates a raised to k. So instead of s tends to epsilon what I am doing is I am substituting this with s tends to a. So where I was stopping in the condition of a raised to m, b raised to m, I am moving on one step ahead for adding a raised to k, that is the additional a's that are there in the language. So my finally context free grammar for the language L is s tends to a raised a s b or a. So instead of s tends to epsilon, it is s tends to a. And then this A tends to A, A or A. I hope this is very much clear my dear friends. You can work on this for generating any word that belongs to the language. If there is any query, you can post it into the comment section. Thank you for watching this video my dear friends. Stay tuned for more videos on theory of computation lecture series.